Hi everyone, this is Ramalinga Prasad Kupa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is Description Test as per USP Chapter 631. Description Test is generally considered as a very simple test and does not require much attention. Though it is not a direct indication of the purity of the product, it is important parameter to establish the physical characteristics of the product. It is also important to understand the intent of this USP chapter 631. Let us see in the following slides. Color is defined as perception or subjective response by an observer to the objective stimulus of radiant energy in the range of 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers in wavelength. How is color perceived? Human eye can identify the colors of visible range of 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. If you see the visible range, there are seven colors, abbreviated as VI, B, G, Y, O, R. They are violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red colors that can be detected by human eye. That is the reason why it is called visible range. This range of colors are visible to human eye. Perceived color is a function of three variables. Color perception, the ability of human eye to identify the colors depend on these factors. Spectral properties of source, how the source of light and intensity is falling on the object plays role in the color perception. Spectral properties of the object, how the object on which the light is falling reflects the light in color perception. Absorptive and reflective properties of source, these characteristics of source also play important role in color perception. Visual characteristics of the observer. Above all, the visual characteristics of the observer, the analyst, play very crucial role in color perception. If the analyst has color blindness, the analyst may not be able to identify the correct color. That is the reason why a color blindness test is added for QC analyst in the medical examination while recruiting. Let us see the requirements. USP prescribes the perception of color and color matches is dependent on the conditions of viewing and illumination. In the previous slide, we have learned on the impact of source and observer on the perception of color. So the observed color is largely dependent on these aspects. Determination should be made using diffuse uniform illumination under conditions that reduce shadows, non-spectral reflectance to a minimum. What is diffuse light? It is the brightness that is caused because of the indirect reflection of the sun rays. So it should be understood that it is the light caused because of the direct sunlight outside in open on a bright sunny day. Since the laboratories operate in closed areas, you may not get adequate diffuse light. Equivalent light could be obtained by using electric lamp with white light. Uniform illumination of white light can be obtained by focusing the light vertically onto the material for which the color determination is to be done. There is yet another prescription. The shadows and non-spectral reflectance should be restricted to minimum. The surface of the powders should be smoothed with gentle pressure so that the planar surface free from irregularities is presented. So how do you get this? Smoothen the surface of the powder to achieve this. We will see the examples in the next slide.
liquids should be compared in matched color comparison tubes against a white background. Liquids must be checked only in matched color comparison tubes. What are matched color comparison tubes? These are your Nestler's tubes. If you carefully see, the bottom of the Nestler tube is flat and not round like a test tube. You should never use the test tube for color comparison test. The illumination is not uniform in such test tubes. Test tubes are not meant for color comparison. In fact, you should not use any other glassware like Baker or a conical flask for this test. We see one example in the coming up slides. See this example. The powder is like a heap in a conical shape. You can see that it is irregular and there is reflectance and shadows all over. Use the flat end of the spatula and press gently on the top of the heap so that it becomes flat without shadows and reflectance. Let us see a typical artificial daylight lamp. This is a typical artificial daylight lamp with flexible stand. This type of lamp is very useful. The lamp can be adjusted accordingly to get uniform illumination that can be focused onto the material. The focus angle can be adjusted to get uniform illumination on the sample for testing. There are several designs available in the market to suit your requirement. So there are several models with different heights available for your convenience. Let us see how a liquid sample is taken for testing. Liquid sample can be taken up to 50 ml or 100 ml. You can see this picture. Sample and standard volumes should be saved in both the tubes. Both tubes should be vertically viewed down on a white background under the same illumination conditions. Never use a test tube or a beaker for this test. Even smaller such match tubes of 25 ml are also available. The important point is that the liquids or solutions should be compared in two cells, one with the sample and the other with standard. Let us see how to determine the color of a solution or a liquid. Different standard color solutions are prepared for establishing the exact hue of the sample. The color standards are prepared using the following reagents. Cobaltus chloride, perichloride, and cupric sulfate. Cobaltus chloride is used for preparation of red primary standard solution. Perichloride is used as yellow primary standard and copper sulfate is used as blue primary standard solution. Details of the test preparation for these colorimetric solutions are provided in USP under the same subject of colorimetric solutions. By mixing various proportions of the color standard solutions matching fluids from A to T, approximately 20 are prepared for establishing the color of the solution or liquid. So by mixing the required quantities of each solution plus water, the referred standard solution from A to T can be obtained. This information is also available in the same section. Let us see how the results are reported. You should never report as complies or confirms to test. You have to describe the exact description of the material as observed. That means you must describe the appearance of the material. For example, if the specification says the powder should be white to off-white, you must describe whether it is white or off-white and cannot report as complies 
or pass this test. Also, when the specification says that way, the expectation is that the product should be closer to white most of the time and not towards off-white shade. For color measurements of liquid solutions, the closest possible standard should be used for comparison. The selected standard color should be closer to the test sample for accurate determination of color. Colorlessness is complete absence of any color in the visible range. Colorlessness means that there is no color in the visible range of 400 to 800 nanometers. It is as clear as water. So most of the colorless solutions are compared with water as standard in the second color comparison tube. I hope you understand the importance of the description test in more details as per the pharmacopoeia requirement. Review and revise your existing procedure to incorporate all these features of the guideline. Thanks for watching. For more videos, please do subscribe, like and share. Thank you.